Pebble Beach show cards you can use on a regular basis like this. It's not regular, I take it out a few times a month, but I drive in an LA traffic. I go up in the hills, I'll take my wife out for a cruise in it. I mean, it just takes you back to a different style, a different time. Welcome to another episode of Jay Lono's Garage Pandemic Edition. This is pretty much what the normal is going to be for a while, so just try to bear with us. The car we're featuring today, 1932 Bugatti Type 49. This is one of the grand touring Bugattis. Up to this point, we've only focused sort of on the high performance racing Bugattis, the Type 37, Type 37A, Type 57, Type 35B. Well, here are three pictures of what the car looked like when found. Now, it seems pretty good, doesn't it? This is what the auction catalog would say, might need mild reconditioning before you can do any motoring. Yeah, tell me about it. As you can see, this is a big job. It's complete, but rough. Notice all the rotted wood. You can see that in all the door panels. The upholstery, not bad, but obviously you can't save it, but at least it gives you some idea what the original upholstery was like. Here's the dashboard. There's the back of the dashboard. Look at that just mess of wires, just rotted carpet, rusty connector. I mean, it just, it needs everything. Look how much rust and just crap is in this car. Oh my God. Every part has to be recommissioned, so to speak. So it shows you how much work is involved. This is thousands of man hours. But the result is uh, worth it. This one was the last of the single overhead cam, eight cylinder Bugattis. Uh, after this point, they went to the Harry Miller uh, twin cam uh, overhead, which is used in the Type 47. But it's just a wonderful car to drive. 16 spark plugs, two per cylinder, which is mind boggling when you see it. Uh, we did not restore this car. This car was restored down in Escondido, California by Gelness Restorations. I hope I'm saying that correctly. I'm dyslexic, so I always screw up names and pronunciations, but I'm gonna put their name right here because they should get credit. They did a wonderful job. They did this car for a very lovely gentleman named Dr. Bersinger, and uh, he took it to Pebble Beach and he won his class, and he was a very nice man, and I got the car from him. I wasn't really looking for one of these, but he was looking to sell it, and I was so impressed with the restoration and the job they did. Because let's face it, you know, a lot of times you see cars and they look beautiful. And then you open the hood and this looks off and that looks off. But, you know, the nice thing about taking a car to Pebble Beach, when the judges judge the car, these guys are experts. They knew what type of wire was used, what type of loom, uh, what sort of clips held the radiator uh, uh, hoses, on, all that type of thing. And this car, well, it won its class, so, and it drives and runs perfectly. I have done nothing to this car other than just maintain it. It is a convertible, but I've never had the top down because when you look at the inside, you see this beautiful, I'm not sure what the material is, maybe mohair. Uh, I just don't want to get it all wrinkly. I've got convertibles. I don't have to drive it as a convertible. It's just such a beautiful car, such a nice running car. Bugatti sometimes don't get enough credit for building terrific, just touring cars that are not racing cars. Everyone focuses on the racing, and, and rightly so. They won, God, what, 800 races in the 20s with the Type 35B, <clears throat> one of the great racing cars of all time. People ask me, oh, did you put those later wheels on it? No, those are 1932, these famous turbine wheels. They're beautifully designed wheels. Did a really nice job on that. Nice color combination. Uh, we'll go through the car here. It, it's, it's a, it's a four-seater. It might look like a two-seater, but it's a four-seater. And it's got a full back seat in the back. You can actually get people back there. Let's open the hood. Let's start with the engine. And, uh, well, that's the most impressive part. First, I'll show you this side. And then we'll go over to the other side. Well, there's the engine right there. They built 468 of these. It is an eight cylinder in line. Actually, it's really two four cylinder blocks put together, basically, is what it is. The bore is 72 millimeters, stroke is 100 millimeter. 
3,257 cc's, so let's make that 3.3 liter just for the sake of argument. Um, it's not especially clean in here because I drive this car and I took it home last night. This has changed color, I'm not quite sure. You know, nowadays you can't get the really good heat proof coating anymore. And that seems to, just from use, it seems to have uh, bleached itself out. Uh, here's your water pump right here. Oil filter is right there. Look at the beautiful cast aluminum fan. Here's your horn. Here's your ignition, strictly a coil ignition. There's no uh, magneto on this because this is considered a, a touring car. Lubrication, of course, is full pressure lubrication. Uh, let's go around to the other side because the other side, I think, is, is the prettier side with the carburetor and the, uh, and the spark plugs. This, I think, is the far more attractive. Notice you have louvers on this side and doors on the other side to pull in air, and this side extracts the air. Sometimes these can stick a little bit. Okay, there we go. Yeah, this is the prettier side. I mean, look at those spark plugs. Oh my God, if this thing's not firing on at least one of them, you got some problems. But it stays reasonably clean in here. I drive this a lot. Once again, I mentioned that, the beautiful cast aluminum fan. Uh, the restoration uh, company did a beautiful job finding the original type wires and everything for this steering box. I mean, just look how nice Bugatti designed everything. That steering box is just a beautiful thing. You open this up and you pull that off. You put your steering grease in there. That carburetor is a Schliebler, which is an American carburetor. Uh, Bugatti was not above using American parts when he, fe if he felt they were be better. I know they use Delco fuel pumps, and uh, so uh, that's an American piece. He took quite a bit from the Americans. I mentioned before Harry Miller, uh, the whole top end of the Harry Miller uh, twin cam was sort of grafted onto Bugatti, but that's okay. They, everybody borrowed from one another. This is how you check your oil and change your oil right here. You got a little floating thing here, and then this is your oil filler here, but just just the way Bugatti stuff is all designed, it's just, you know, just fascinating. Just beautiful cars. Uh, fuel pump. Yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory. Look at all the beautiful engine turning here, which is nicely done. As I mentioned, this is single overhead cam, three valves per cylinder, two intake, one exhaust, which is kind of opposite of the way people do it now, but that's just the way they did it. Uh, two intake, one exhaust. Um, just the shroud, the cover, I mean, uh, this intake manifold, it's all just beautifully done. Look at the way the wires go in here and then each wire comes out through there. You know, just getting those wires to go through, getting 16 wires through this tube <laughs> seems like it would be a huge deal. Um, try and find one of those distributed caps. As I mentioned before, they only built 468 of these, which doesn't seem like much by American car manufacturing standards, but that was... This is a popular car. This was a good touring car. Uh, oh, it's also one of the first Bugattis to have a fan. You know, most Bugattis did not have a fan because they were racing cars and they were moving all the time. But by 1932, traffic was picking up in major cities like Paris and places, and they realized, okay, we better put a fan in. And that's what they did, this beautiful cast aluminum fan, uh, this nickel, I guess this is German silver, I think they call it, uh, the radiator. Uh, okay, let's, let's go around to the back of the car and I'll show you the, the trunk and how they did that. Come on. Okay, here we are at the rear of the car. <clears throat> You know, a lot of Bugattis would have the double spare back here. You notice they're on each fender. Because this was a touring car. People went on trips with these things. And this has got a pretty full-size trunk right here. Now, now you get a suitcase in there. It's a little awkward, but I just got a cover and a uh, uh, license plate frame and a few pieces in here. But yeah, it's a nice, you can actually take some stuff in this thing. All the beautiful clasps, they're just nicely, nicely done, the Landau bar. It's a beautifully styled car. You might notice it's listing a little to this side. You know, it's almost impossible to find guys that can arc springs anymore. 
but that's sort of the problem. I've, I've talked to uh, Poisson down in Argentina, you know, the guys that build the Bugatti replicas, they do beautiful jobs, and see if they can make me a set of springs, and uh, I'll put those on. But that's really the only complaint I have about this car. You will notice when I get in the car, you have a center throttle, so there's a 10C and an emergency. <laughs> You think you hit the brake and you just nail in the throttle, which is kind of stupid. Uh, gear shift is completely reversed. First is where third is normally. Second is where fourth is. It, it's everything. It's just you have to uh, sort of, before you drive this, you go, okay, what am I in? Okay, I'm sitting on the wrong side with a backwards gear shift and a center throttle. You have to pay attention when you drive Bugatti. The switches are typically French. Uh, yeah, nothing is marked. It's just a, it's an experience, but that's, that's part of the fun of Bugatti ownership. As I said, I've never put this top, top down. I'm just afraid I don't want to rest it on here or leave a mark. And, but I do drive this. I use this car. Come on, let's go around the front and I'll show you the dashboard and everything. Just look at the interior of this car, you know. When you look at the Bugatti racing cars, obviously they're pretty Spartan, but this is a luxury car. I mean, the wood, I always love how delicate the controls are. This is advanced and retired. This is a hand throttle uh, right down here as you choke. Can you see the center gas pedal there? Uh, full complement of gauges here, fuel uh, speedometer, ammeter, fuel pressure, tachometer, temperature. Uh, you sort of have two ignition keys you put in here. Um, you know, the real difference between a restoration and a Pebble Beach restoration is when you look under the dash of this car. I want to get under here with uh, uh, the iPhone and show you the level of detail and the wiring in this car. Uh, they did just a beautiful job, the restoration shop. They just did wonderful work. Um, and of course, for some reason, we've got to use the same color wire for everything, so it makes it pretty hard to trace. But it just looks so pretty under there. It's just nicely done. Up here is your windshield washer right here. Your windshield opens, you loosen this and thing, and then you tighten this down, and that clamps down. Or it should clamp down. There we go. To keep the windshield open. Uh, and then when you shut it again, you do that, pull that up, and then these slide down into place and you tighten them down for in the winter or something. But uh, you've also got another lever here that opens the, the hood scoop to allow more air to the driver's feet. Emergency brake down there, big comfortable seats. It's really a very pleasant driving experience in this beautiful Bugatti steering wheel. I mean, this is, this is one of my favorite steering wheels, this and the Ford Banjo steering wheel and the 32 Ford. Uh, beautiful wood wheel and the way this is all tapered. Uh, you know, Bugatti came from a family of artists and sculptors, all his brothers and fathers. They were, his father was a sculptor and his brother, and they just did beautiful work. And, uh, and he just happened to sculpt automobiles and uh, did a wonderful job of it. Here I am under the dashboard. Uh, I'm lying on the seat to give you some perspective here. There's this antenna. Look at the beautiful wiring job. I mean, plus all the wires are the same color. How do you trace that? Oh my God, they did such a nice job. There's your scintilla fuse box right there. Uh, but you know, that's how you can tell a really good restoration when the parts you don't see are as nicely done as the parts you do see. There's that center throttle I was talking about. Uh, but as you can see, it's uh, really just an amazing restoration. This car was done about 20 years ago. I'm sure that whatever it cost to do it back then, it's probably doubled since. But still, it's an amazing, amazing job the uh, gentleman's people did down there. If you've got a car you want done, I would highly recommend them. Uh, they did a nice, nice job, as you can see. All right. 
let's take it next door and put it up on the lift. Okay, here we are with the Type 49 up in the lift. We'll start here at the back. Notice the beautiful fin brake drums. Actually, not brake drums, the whole wheel. The wheel is the brake drum that comes off with, when you take the wheel off, the whole brake drum comes off, which is kind of interesting. Uh, look at the differential. Look how beautifully designed it is. It looks a little, uh, a little bit of weeping there, but not too bad. I mean, I've never really cleaned under this car in a while. Now, here's something that might surprise you, because Bugattis were traditional and somewhat old-fashioned, and that even in 1932, it's still got mechanical brakes. They work quite well, but they are mechanical. A lot of people did not trust fluid in a little tube, and I, I sort of understand that. This wire you see hanging down, it's just <clears throat> for the battery charger. But it's not throwing a lot of oil. I mean, I put a lot of miles on this car. Well, you know, maybe 4,000 or something. Not a whole lot, but it runs and drives very, very nicely. The guys did a beautiful job. I mean, look at all the plated nuts and bolts even in the here. And of course, Bugatti castings are, well, just beautiful. You got this shroud here. Traditional oil pan that's finned. You remember on other Bugattis that have the holes going through? This didn't have that to cooling. This is more traditional. This is just a grand touring car, so I guess they figured the oil wouldn't get that hot. It does have four-wheel brakes. Don't forget Henry Ford. Well, Henry Ford had four-wheel brakes by 32 but also mechanical. Chrysler, Duesenberg, everybody else was using hydraulic brakes. Notice the solid front axle. There's no independent suspension on this thing. Pardon my, get my hands getting in front of the camera. Uh, as, you, as you watch this, you realize I'm not the best cameraman. Here's your generator here. Uh, but beautifully done. I like how the springs go through the axle. Isn't that just kind of a piece of art? Isn't that really nice? I really like that. I just like the curvature. I like the design. Every piece, even pieces you don't think are designed, are designed. Okay, we'll take one last trip. Here's your exhaust system, obviously. Big exhaust system, but you still hear this motor. <coughs> Huge. Look at the size of that muffler. Oh, my God. Is... But don't forget, this is a touring car. It's supposed to be quiet. There's your, your dampers there. And, of course, your gas tank. And I guess, uh, ooh. We're about ready to go for a ride. I think it's fair to say the Americans were a little further ahead in 1932. This car did not have synchro mesh transmission. It does not have hydraulic brakes. It has mechanical brakes. Uh, you know, a few things. It's this is old school. And uh, Bugatti was one of those guys, he didn't move to the next thing until absolutely exhausted every, every other possible uh, way to do it. He had his own way of doing things. It's a wonderfully classic car to drive. And this idea of throttle in the middle and brake where the gas pedal is, is uh, it takes some getting used to, but you adapt pretty quickly. I love that the windshield opens and of course, the workmanship is unsurpassed. Just a beautiful car, beautiful looking car. Ugh. You've got your advance and retard right here, and you've got a hand throttle right here, which comes in handy if you're holding it on hills and stuff. This padded top is as nice as anything Rolls Royce or Bentley ever did. I know of 
or have run extremely cool. It is a very hot day today here in Los Angeles, close to 100 degrees Fahrenheit, and I'm at 65 centigrade, maybe. I mean, turning through France and wine country in one of these back in the day, well, what's better than that? Actually, I don't drink wine. I probably have a Coke or something, but hey, when, when in France, hey. I try to double clutch. Your shift should be slow and deliberate. Luckily, this is such a torquey motor, it can pull away in just about any gear. As you know, Bugatti was Italian, but he lived in France, so his cars are French cars. But it's a perfect blending of French and Italian, I think. You know, Bugattis are like golf. You either get it or you don't. I don't get golf. I'm not a golfer. It makes no sense to me. But I get Bugatti. Now, once you, when you take one of these apart and you look at it, you examine how each part was designed or style that has that Bugatti flair. You know, this it's just beautiful. They really are kinetic artwork, kinetic sculpture. His family did, uh, oh God, hundreds of animal sculptings, you know, tigers, lions, the elephant on the Royale, things like that. But to me, his sculptures are the most valuable because they move, that you can actually use them, and they serve a purpose other than just beauty. There aren't a lot of Pebble Beach show cars you can use on a regular basis like this. It's not regular, I take it out a few times a month, but I drive in an LA traffic, I go up in the hills, I'll take my wife out for a cruise in it. I mean, it's just, it takes you back to a different style, a different time. And it, it really, really, you know, holding this steering wheel just feels magnificent. You got all those ridges here for your hands. And just beautiful. This eight-cylinder motor is silky smooth. But you can cruise 55, 60, no problem. It's just a shame how few of these cars actually get used. Because the real thrill, the real art, the real sense of the car is you're in it as it's moving. And the feel and the smell and, and just you know, I love the days before power steering and power boosters and power brakes because everything was nicely weighted and there was a nice sense of balance to how everything handled and drove. In fact, contemporary road tests of the period say this car handled quite well. Uh, I mean, you can't compare it across to modern stuff. But they said in the road tests, especially the English, that they were reluctant to put the speed of the road test in the article because it was illegal and they were astounded at how well the car handled. Again, it's all how the car makes you feel. It's not about the speed, not about the handling. Well, I guess a little bit of the handling. But you really feel like you're driving this car. And it's the kind of vehicle, if you own it and you use it on a regular, you learn all the idiosyncrasies of how everything works and how everything operates. You know, the fun thing about a car like this is the shared experience. I think most car enthusiasts are familiar with Bugatti and know the name, but have never possibly seen one and certainly not driven one. So by doing these videos, I like to feel maybe I get a chance to share the experience. When I was a kid, a little kid before I could drive and I went to car shows, there would always be guys that let you sit in the car and take it for a ride. And I still remember those to this day. So. That's why it's fun to do these. A lot of people never get a chance to ride in a Bugatti. Maybe this is close as they get, so it's fun to be able to share it. Hope you enjoyed this video, and hopefully this pandemic will be over soon. We get back to normal life, but luckily for me, this is normal life. See you guys next week. Bye-bye. Mm-hmm. <laughs>